Here at the dealership in Nevada, I'm gonna do a big used RV sale for the end of January through the middle of February. And with that beeping noise in the background, I'm gonna film this Transcend I took in on trade. Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle. They call me the Honey Badger because I give it to straight and transparent about the RV business. This is the 2021 Grand Design Transcend 261 BH. And I'm a huge fan of this floor plan. I actually really like the layout. I think you're gonna enjoy it as well. I am so sorry about the beeping noise. It comes from that electrical tower. So it rained all day today and it goes off every time it rains. So you're gonna have to forgive it. Now, if this is the first time you've seen my channel, I do an eight to 10 minute walk around of the entire travel trailer and go over everything I can with you without big sound effects or editing. It's just a straight up type of video. Now, when I took it in trade, it came with a power tongue jack, two batteries, two seven and a half gallon propane bottles. And this is how it came. And this, I, I'm, I'm seeing more and more of this. And again, it's not Transcend's fault that the graphics are horrible, but the front graphics, especially if you live in the desert or you live anywhere there's intense sun, they fade and crack quickly. Um, as you can tell, the guy actually removed them because they're cracking so bad. Um, but there's nothing wrong with the front cap itself. It just looks ugly because, well, it has the indentation of all of the graphics or all of the Transcend. So big pass-through storage, battery disconnect. You got your fresh water connection in there. Uh, it's got manual stabilizers front and back. I like the way Transcend does their metal. I like the way it looks. It doesn't look like a traditional aluminum sided trailer. And I like how many windows they put inside this trailer. And I like where they put the ladder. I like the fold up ladder up against the body rather than being in the back. Uh, it's a 30 amp coach. It had its spare tire, six gallon propane electric hot water heater big power awning outside kitchen. Uh, remember that refrigerator only runs when you're plugged in a sh plugged into shore power. Pardon me, my, my tongue, my tongue doesn't want to work very well today. Okay. Walking inside. Now, normally I have the lights on. I don't have any power right now. You hear the beeping in the background it tells you I really don't have any power. Now this has a 12 volt refrigerator. This is not propane electric wrong side. This is actually a 12 volt electric refrigerator and freezer. Now it's deeper uh, than the propane electric. This also has solar and a solar charge controller. That's how it came in on trade. You got a three burner stove and oven. We'll go into that real quick right here. As you can tell, if you're looking deep, the interior is in really good shape. Outside of the front cap, the rest of it is just immaculate, okay? Now, if you look at the data manufacturer, and I'll go over the weights at the end of the video, uh, the data manufacturer on it was December of 2020. Now, a lot of people would be scared by that because it was a COVID built unit. We've gone through it, everything works. In fact, I stayed in this particular trailer for a week when we took it on trade. Normally when I take them on trade, I plug them in, I use the shower, I use the water. I, I test stuff basically being like as if I was a full-timer because I kind of do full-time. Uh, let's see. Do we have, nope, we don't have any battery power. Okay. So you got, I'm sorry it's so dark. Again, I'm sorry about no light. But you got closets on each side. This is the biggest weakness of this floor plan is you really have to slide in between the mattress here because as a residential size queen bed if it was an rv queen it would take away six inches of the mattress and you'd have a more walk around area so the solution is if you don't care about the residential size queen bed take it out and put an rv queen in there and then you'll have a full walk around space okay by the way there's usb and 15 amp uh, plugs on each side of the bed Coming around here, you got a sleeper sofa. This is actually a tri-fold sleeper sofa. You have your booth dinette, flat screen TV. But what I didn't show you right here, besides my coffee, 
is it has all this really cool storage. Like you could put shoes in there. Somebody comes in, they put their shoes in there instead of having them all over the place. I mean, that's pretty slick. And then you got drawers, hey, keys, wallet, you know, things that you come inside and you go, hey, where'd that go? Where did I put it? <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little goofy today. We'll go over the kitchen storage here in a minute. And then just like I always say, I like to pull out drawers under the dinette rather than the cabinet. Now, most people go, well, don't you have a problem with grand design? Well, yes, with their fifth wheels. I think Transcend and Imagine are pretty decent products. I'm not gonna say they're the best, but they are very decent. So good cabinet space, full-size bunk beds with storage under the bottom bunk, and the bathroom. Oop. Kevin left towels in here cleaning it. This feels like a waste, but again, some people have told me they really like that that little shelf space to put little towels, roll up towels and put them in there. But the shower's a nice size. I've used the shower personally. You don't feel claustrophobic in it. But the toilet feels like you're in a sardine can. So we can't have everything, can we? Uh, sink for the bathroom, medicine cabinet and storage underneath the sink. And let's go back just real quick to go through all the kitchen storage. Good sliding drawer area. Bada bing, bada boom. Decent cabinet space with access to your plumbing. Same thing under here. Same thing under here. And they left the uh, manuals. And then above, one more time, just go through all the little cabinets. I mean, it's a great floor plan. I moved into this for about a week. And now I'm putting it online for sale because we're going to have a really big used RV sale here at the dealership. Now, one thing I want to just say before we go to the weights. This is really cool. Now, they didn't pull it out of the way. But I prefer these steps over the uh, solid step that folds in. That's just my opinion, though, guys, okay? And then finally, let's go to the weights. The weights are over here. If we look here, it's got two 3,500 pound axles. Dry weight is 6,514 pounds with a GVWR of 7,695 pounds. Okay. Now, if you have any questions, uh, if you want a price on it, uh, the sales price, I haven't decided what I'm going to sell it for yet. I know it will be under $20,000. i am just not sure what I'm going to price it at yet. But if you click on the link to my website below, um, I'll have the price in there. Uh, also, on my social media, if you have any questions or want to contact me, as well as my email. And in the top right-hand corner, I'm going to do another used RV that I have uh, for sale.